Jerry also says she's going on uh, the sunshine nine months after that. That's exciting. Well, guys, 10 seconds of showtime. We can take one more sip of beverage, and then we're going to start the show, all right? Cheers. Oh, God. On our show tonight, we look at the best cruise ports. We have a photo of the week, the latest cruise news, your questions answered, and a little bit on cruising history. All of this and a big dose of alcohol coming up on Cruise Week TV Live. Our show this week is brought to you by the folks at Good Memories Travel and by vMix. Welcome to our weekly cruise show here every Saturday to help you bring you guys the news, tips, tricks, and money-saving ways to get more out of your next cruise. I'm Joe, and tonight I'm going to take a look at some of the fun things about cruising. And if you're watching live on Facebook, Periscope, or our YouTube channels, please feel free to post your questions in the comments, and we're going to be sure to answer them during the show. So let's start off by taking a quick look at our photo of the week. Now, this week's photo comes from the Facebook group Royal Caribbean International Cruisers, past, present, and future. Wow, that is a mouthful. Anyway, this week's photo was sent in by Marilyn Montroy, and the photo was uh, taken as they sailed into Cuba. Now, that's a great, great shoreline picture. It's a great picture of Cuba. And so thank you so much for sending that in, Marilyn. And uh, guys, remember, we pick a new photo each week and feature the best, uh, a, a new Facebook group each week and feature the best photo from that group. So if you keep an eye on the groups of where we post next week, the photo of the week could be yours. So when you book a cruise, you can book it online, you can call the cruise line direct, or you can save some extra money and call a travel agent. When you have a travel agent, you can save money in cash back incentives, get extra gifts. Also, if there's a problem with booking, you have someone on the inside to help sort it out rather than just calling a random rep on the phone at the cruise line. And Good Memories Travel is a full service travel agency that offers you cash back and incentives that you won't get booking direct with the cruise line. So why would you pay more for less? You can call and or, or visit Good Memories Travel on the web, and it costs you nothing to compare a price and see the superior service and extras you get when you go through Debbie and her team for your next cruise vacation. They cover all the cruise lines, and if you're a new cruiser, they can even suggest the best ship and cruise to suit your cruising style. So give Debbie a call or visit their website today and see how much easier and cheaper it can be. Debbie can be re reached directly at 321-338-2953, and of course, through their website at goodmemoriestravel.com. Now, when you think of the Caribbean, I'm sure you think of sandy beaches, teal water, and sunshine, as most of us do, and why not? The Caribbean islands are some of the most beautiful in the whole world. Maybe you've never cruised the Caribbean, and you wonder what interesting things there are to see and do there. Maybe you've been on 100 cruises and never actually taken a shore excursion. Well, to try and help out all, new, all cruisers, the old and the experienced, and the new, we've compiled a list of the top 10 shore excursions that you can take on your next cruise to the Caribbean. Well, maybe not all at once, unless you happen to live on a cruise ship, but either way, I'm sure there's something on our list for everyone. So without further ado, let's get started with our top 10 list of the shore excursions in the Caribbean. All right, beginning with number 10. Number 10, Atlantis Resort and Casino. Uh, the port that you'd visit for this one would be Nassau in the Bahamas. Uh, most cruise ships go there, of course. If, you're, if you've been to the Caribbean uh, eastern side, most cruise ships dock at some point in Nassau. Um, and the Atlantis Resort is Nassau's star attraction. It's an ocean-themed resort on Paradise Island in the Bahamas, which features a variety of accommodations built around AquaVenture, which is a 141-acre waterscape, which includes fresh and saltwater lagoons, pools, marine habitats, water slides, and river rides. The resort uh, also features a casino and a marina, uh, marina designed to dock large yachts. The eastern side of the uh, marina features the, mar mar the excuse me the marina village, which is a small shopping center reminiscent of the market style tourist centers such as uh, Faneuil Hall in Boston or downtown Disney at the American Disney Parks. If you've ever been to uh, Disneyland or um, a Disney World down in Orlando, the center also features numerous restaurants and stores such as Ben and Jerry's, Carmine's, and Starbucks. Getting to the resort from the cruise part is also fairly easy and inexpensive by taxi. Just a short 10 to 15 minute ride from the port and you'll be having a blast in no time. For visitors young and old, Atlantis Resort has a lot to offer. 
uh, when it comes to hitting the slot machines or taking a ride down the Mayan temple slides, which are grand icons of AquaVenture. With a height of over six stories, Atlantis is something you don't want to miss in Nassau. You guys, also, uh, if there, if you've been to Nassau, be sure to tell me a little bit about it. And if, if you agree with that being on the list, especially Atlantis, if you think Atlantis should be on the list, or if there's a port that I don't hit that you think should be on the list, be sure to let me know in the comments because I'm totally reading the comments and I'm, uh, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Now, next on our list, number nine would be a uh, San Juan food tour. Uh, San Juan food tour. Now, if you've ever been to San Juan, Puerto Rico. The food there is different than most other places in, in the Caribbean. And if you're a foodie, this is one definitely for you. Puerto Rico's Cachina Criolla is some of the richest and most varied cuisine in the Caribbean. Now, Old San Juan is practically overflowing with top-notch eateries, serving dishes inspired by the island's blend of Spanish, African, Taino, Indian, and American culinary cultures. If you love food as much as I do, or really, I should say, as much as Bird does, um, <laughs> the unique flavors of San Juan are definitely a must try. Now, while you're there, you need to be sure to sample the delicious dishes like mofangos, arroz con pollo, uh, camarones uh, and cerveza, and also sip a pina colada in the exact city where it was invented. If you're feeling extra adventurous, you could even take a class that teaches you how to cook the Puerto Rican way. Once you're in San Juan, getting there is pretty simple. A lot of the restaurants of old San Juan are literally footsteps away from the main cruise ship piers in the peninsula's southern shore. So, so convenient that you can improvise your own tour of the culinary scene, or you can even sign up for an organized one through your cruise line. Either way, when you visit San Juan, make sure you don't leave without getting a taste of the local flavors. Um, yeah, Jerry Key says San Juan is a nice city. Jerry, I'll tell you, San Juan is, uh, I've, I've not been there myself, but everyone that has ever been to San Juan tells me it is an absolutely beautiful city. And I hear the same thing about uh, about the food there, that it's just absolutely amazing, better, different than the rest of the Caribbean. Um, also, I think they have a rum distillery there, if I, if I remember correctly. I know they do, a, they have a beer um a brewery there as well, but I believe they also have a, a certain rum distillery that you can take a tour of while you're there too. So if you're a foodie, that just, just seems like a really good place to go and uh, and and tour the you can tour the distillery and get a taste of the local flavors there. Uh, Charisse Kali, I think uh, Charisse Kali commented about Saint Lucia. Charisse, uh, we might be getting to that one just a little later in the list. So <laughs> don't be surprised if, it, if it's going to show up a little later on the list. But next on our list, uh, we got uh, num for number eight touring St. Elizabeth Parish in Jamaica. Now, St. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Parish is one of Jamaica's largest parishes. It's located on the southwest of the island, and its capital is Black River. And that's named after the river that's located at the mouth, uh, that, that is located at the mouth of. It's just located right at the mouth of the Black River in uh, Jamaica. So since the 1990s, the parish has definitely become a significant tourist destination with most visitors going to the Treasure Beach area. The Appleton Rum Distillery near the rough cockpit country is the no is just north of the Paris, and it, it's also a tourist destination. The cockpit area was the site of the Maroon settlements through much of the 18th century, and ecological tourism along the Black and Yass rivers and the Great Morass has been developed in recent years. It's no secret that Jamaica has always been a vacationer's hotspot, and St. Elizabeth Parish alone has a plethora of activities for adventure seekers. Getting to St. Elizabeth Parish takes a little while by car, so I suggest making all the arrangements in advance if possible. It's about 40 miles from the port of Montego Bay, but when you get there, don't leave without taking a dip in the teal-colored pools of YS Falls. Also, see if you can spot some crocodiles along the Black River Swamp and definitely drink some of the best rum the Caribbean has to offer from the Appleton Estate. It's uh, the port of Montego Bay, Jamaica. That would be the easiest way to get there, and it's it, you won't be disappointed. Now, the last port we talked about, San Juan. Rita Bullard says Bacardi. Oh, that's right, Bacardi. That's in San Juan. That was the one I was missing. I knew they had a rum distillery there, but yes, they do a Bacardi tour in San Juan. That's right. I completely forgot about that. Thank you so much, Rita. But uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it, it's definitely something. Uh, if you're into distillery tours, I totally am because um, I've I've done several. I've done the Jack Daniels Distillery, and it's it's totally worth seeing. A distillery tour is always on the list whenever I try to travel somewhere new. So if they, especially if uh, if it's something just totally local. 
Sharice Colley says, Jamaica will always have a special place in her heart. Sharice, tell me, why you have to tell us in the comments now why Jamaica is always going to have a special place in your heart. Is it just one of your favorite vacation hotspots, or is there more to that story than that? <laughs> Moving on our list, Sharice, while you're typing the comments, we're going to go to the next one on our list, and I'm going to come back to you. So I hope expect to hear a good story on that. Number seven on our list is going to be Stingray City. Okay, animal lovers, this next one is for you. One of the Caribbean's oldest and most popular shore excursions is still one of the best, a chance to feed and frolic with the stingrays of Stingray City and Grand Cayman. The Stingray City is a shallow sandbank off of Rum Point on the north shore of Grand Cayman, and stingrays have been gathering here for ages, and they welcome tourists who want to swim and feed with them. Now, you may wonder why Grand Cayman is such a popular place for these animals. Well, it might be that the stingrays began gathering in the area decades ago when fishermen returning from an excursion navigated behind a reef into the sound and cleaned their fish in the calm, calm water of the shallows and the sandbar area. Now, the fish guts and squid were thrown overboard, and the stingrays eventually congregated to feast there. Soon the stingrays even associated the sound of a boat uh, with food. So as this practice turned into a tradition, divers realized that the stingrays could actually be fed by hand. It's quite an interesting thing. You take a little piece of fish, you put it between your two fingers, and let the stingray kind of swim right over it, and they just suck it right up out of your hand. And today, tour and excursion boats, along with private watercraft, gather at Stingray City in large numbers. There's a wide variety of companies that offer Stingray City excursions, which have all their own unique features. Rum Point lies about three hours by road and 15 minutes by ferry from Georgetown, and it's a twin cruise terminal, so you may want to wake up early in the morning to go swimming with the stingrays. Now, cruisers can scuba or snor snorkel Stingray City. Most tours are by a motorboat, but several island outfitters also offer adrenaline-packed personal watercraft excursions that culminate in a Stingray swim. Now, the port you'd visit for that one would be uh, Grand Cayman. Richard actually says he's been there and done that, and he says he loves that place. Yeah, Stingray City is, uh, and I've seen pictures of Stingray City. Like that's one place I haven't been yet. Bird has been to Grand Cayman. Um, I know, but I don't. I'm not sure if he's ever gotten a chance to tour Stingray City. But it's no, but I have um, swum with the Stingrays at one point. Oh, you did swim, swim yeah. with the Stingrays. Where did you swim with the Stingrays? Um, <laughs> I can't remember. It was one of the islands, but yeah, you can feed them, and they are all over. It's um, really fun. Okay, yeah, it's, I mean, I, I've seen the picture. It looks like a lot of fun. It's like it's like a step above SeaWorld. If you've been to that attraction at SeaWorld where the, like, where the stingrays swim around in the pool and you get to feed them, you just put the little fish between your two fingers and let, you, let the stingray just kind of like uh, swim right over over your hand. Richard actually says they come up and kiss you. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of what they do. Yeah, it's like, uh, it, it's it, in a way, it's, uh, it, it's like, because that's how their mouth moves. So it's, they're trying to get the food, but yeah, that's what they do. Uh, Rosanna actually says, we love the Stingray Island. They're a beautiful creature, very gentle. And yes, they are very, they are very gentle creatures. They're, uh, and, and it's, it, it's very fun to go, go pet them and feed them. It's, it's, if you're an animal lover, that's one that I would definitely recommend for you. Um, Charisse, if you guys still got to tell me why Jamaica's always going to have a special place in your heart, I got, <laughs> I can't wait to hear. So. Uh, moving on next on our list, uh, yeah, Grand Cayman is a, is a beautiful place. And the next one on our list is even more beautiful, in my opinion, Lamini Ruins. Lamini is a Mesoamerican archaeological site. It was once a major city of the Mayan civilization. Now, this is located on the north part of Belize in the Orange Walk district. The tropical New River meanders inland from Belize coast to the ruins of Lamini, which was once lost in the jungle. Shore excursions combine boating, walking, nature, and Mesoamerican history. Lamini is accessible to tourists by organized day boat trips from Orange Walk Town along the New River or by dirt and gravel road through the Mennonite area of the shipyard. So you just have to really decide which way you want to go. Um, if, if you really want to do the hike up there, or if you want to take the river tour. Um, our recommendation for getting there would be via riverboat. And there's several reasons for that. Now, not that you won't see some really cool stuff walking, but a riverboat would be, if you're on vacation, come on, riverboat's a lot more relaxing. Plus, the riverboat wharf in uh, Orange Walk Village is north of the cruise ship Tender Dock in Belize City. Also, if the history alone isn't enough to get you to Lamini Ruins, maybe the chance of seeing some exotic wildlife is. While you're there, if you do take the river cruise, uh, keep an eye open for spider monkeys, crocodiles, iguanas, and bird life along New River. 
Also, uh, climb the pyramid, uh, the high pyramid, for a view over the jungle, for the best view that you can get over the jungle. And last but not least, be sure to check out the Mennonite settlement at Riverside Shipyard. Now, of course, these aren't the only ruins in uh, in, in the Caribbean, but they're, they're I, I want to say they're some of the most untouched, because not a lot of people travel as much to the ruins in uh, Lamini as they do to places like that are more famous, like Chichen Itza. Or uh, maybe even Tulum. Like people travel there quite quite more often. So if you if you want to go see some Mayan ruins and you don't want as much of a crowd, I would definitely recommend Lamini and and definitely taking the river cruise down there. So uh, yeah, totally uh, totally check that out uh, if you're ever in Belize uh, Belize City Belize. That would be the port that you would dock into and uh, book your excursion to Lamini ruins. All right. Uh, We've got uh, Jeffrey Poole just, uh, Puller just joined us, says about to go live on the glory right now. Oh, oh, goodness. I'm so jealous of these people that are always on cruises. <laughs> I need to go on vacation. Only six more days till mine. All right. Next, moving on. Underwater Sculpture Park. And this is one you guys might have seen on Facebook. You might have seen this one come up once or twice uh, in your news feed because it's somewhat... Oh, it's become more popular in recent years because it's still fairly new. Um, the underwater sculpture park, it's, it's kind of creepy, kind of beautiful, but you better get your snorkel or scuba gear ready. The Molinaire Underwater Sculpture Park is a collection of ecological underwater contemporary art located in the Caribbean Sea off the west coast of Granada, and it was created by British sculptor Jason Decare Taylor. And crafted by three different artists, Granada's submerged sculpture gal gallery sprawled across the floor of Molinaire Bay, and among the, uh, its iconic works are the haunting Circle of Children, which if, if you don't know what that is, you need to go Google it and check out Cir the Ch Circle of Children sculpture. It is kind of creepy to look at, and it's kind of beautiful all at the same time. Um, there's the Lost Correspondent, which is uh, pecking on a typewriter, and, and the whimsical man on a bicycle. All these are underwater, and it's just something about taking these sculptures and putting them underwater just makes them more awe-inspiring. And it just adds, it, it's beautiful, but it adds kind of a level of creepiness to them as well, because after a while, you know, the water just kind of wears on them. They collect seaweed and whatnot. It's, but it's really cool, and I don't believe they would have the same impact on land. And since this park is underwater, getting there is going to be a little different. Scuba and snorkel excursions apart from the Grand Anne's Beach, 3.5 miles south of the St. George's Cruise Terminal. Um, off, and of course, scuba diving is the ideal way to explore the sculpture garden because you can get right down among the figures. Now, if you don't have an underwater camera, I would recommend you probably plan one if you want to go visit the sculpture garden because you're going to want to take as many pictures down there as possible. Um, and get, so get your underwater camera ready for Instagram. Or should I say Instaclam? <laughs> uh, that's a joke. Clams because it's underwater. Okay, anyway. Um, <laughs> it was funny. It was a funny joke. Birds like, <laughs> birds like making fun of me in my ear. Anyway. Uh, Cherise says he's been, she's been to both ports, couples, uh, couples in the grill, however, an adult inclusive in the grill, sunsets beautiful, nude catamaran, catamaran trips to Rick's Cafe, nude and prude size. Of, there, I'm seeing the word nude a lot in this comment. <laughs> it sounds like you had a, either way, Cherise, it sounds like a great vacation. Anytime you have to say nude more than three times, it's. <laughs> it sounds like uh, Cherise would do anything to save a few bucks on uh, doing laundry on the ship you know you, that's actually not a bad way to save money on doing laundry on the ship <laughs> whatever works and yeah if you're you know if, if it's comfortable for you you're on vacation that's the all the excuse that you need you're on vacation you do what you want <laughs> Cherise I totally I, I I get you on that one that's that I think that's really cool <laughs> I'm glad I'm and I'm so glad that uh that Jamaica has a special spot in your heart <laughs> uh all right, moving on. Moving on down our list, uh, <laughs> number four on our list: scenic cruise or hike in Saint Lucia. Yes, I told you we might be bringing Saint Lucia back up, and I, 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 I'm sorry I had to spoil the, the fun on that one. But yes, number four on our list: scenic cruise or hike in Saint Lucia. So a few months ago, um, 
I believe it was December. We had one of our favorite travel bloggers on the show, Haley with a flair, if you remember. Um, probably a lot of you guys follow her on uh, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. She travels, she blogs all over the place. Anyway, she had just returned when we had talked to her in December. We She just returned from St. Lucia to tell us all about it. And as I remember, a, a good number of us hadn't been to St. Lucia. I remember reading the comments and a good number of us had not even been to St. Lucia. And we weren't sure why we should go. Well, as we learned from Haley, St. Lucia is probably one of the most beautiful islands in the Caribbean. And it's no wonder why a scenic cruise or hike in St. Lucia made it onto our top 10 list for shore excursions. Now, Haley had the pleasure of doing one of these uh, hiking trips throughout St. Lucia. And, and it, she, the pictures she showed us were absolutely amazing. Now, although the beaches of St. Lucia draw a number of tourists, other attractions include the Patons, which are two volcanic plugs that rise more than 700 meters directly from the sea and are listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, also, there's the Sulphur Springs, the St. Lucia Botanical Gardens, and many, many other tours, some of the, which include zip lining and snorkeling. The island of St. Lucia isn't exactly a large island, so seeing the island altogether is fairly easy uh, for the savvy cruiser. Though I hear booking a tour on the island certainly helps when you want to plan to only spend a day. But regardless of uh, how you see the island, go see it, because it is really one of the most beautiful islands in all of the Caribbean. And not too many of the islands in the Caribbean have any vol volcanic activity. So if you w are interested in seeing some volcanic activity, not something that we see too much of anywhere, um, definitely go visit St. Lucia. It's one of the most beautiful islands in the Caribbean, and that's why it made it onto our top 10 list. Um, so... Last time we talked, uh, I remember about St. Lucia. I remember not a lot of us went to St. Lucia. Um, if you have been to St. Lucia and you can vouch for St. Lucia being a beautiful destination, please leave a comment in the comment section so I can uh, so so we can talk about it. Or if you feel like St. Lucia might not might be a beautiful island, but might not make it be number four on our list. If you feel like there's something else that should have been rearranged, also comment that in there as well. <laughs> Moving on down our list, uh, a Havana city tour. Now, there's no uh, Havana being a very big hot spot right now. Uh, you have to go there. If you go, go there, you need to definitely book a city tour of Havana to get the most out of your time there. Um, it, Havana is a tough place to to go to. You have to have, I think it's you have to have approval for either an educational tour or or, or something there's something along those lines to actually go into Havana now. Uh, because before the communist revolution, Havana was one of the vacation hotspots of the Caribbean, and since Cuba reopened to tourism in the 1990s, it's become a popular destination once again, albeit with many fewer U.S. citizens due to an almost total ban on travel maintained by the U.S. federal government. However, since the ban had been lifted, it opened a whole new part of the world for us, uh, for U.S. tourists to explore and learn about. And we've talked about Havana on the show before, and we've seen pictures and videos. And guys, it's almost like a place that has been frozen in time. We've got old style cars still roaming the streets and visiting Havana will be, uh, there's going to be lots of tourists at any time of year. So definitely visit the Museum of the Revolution and the Capitol building and also see if you can check out a live cigar factory. Asuba, Cuba is well known for their high quality cigars. Um, also, if that's a souvenir that you can bring back that you might not have been able to bring back if you had gone 10 years ago. You can actually, you can bring back a Cuban cigar now. You wouldn't have been able to do that a long time ago had you gone. Um, of course, fairly recently in the news, we've we've heard some uh, we've we've heard some downsides to uh, Cuba at the U.S. embassy. Um, but uh, so far, tourists tourism hasn't been affected too well. Uh, I mean, it hasn't been affected too badly by that. Um, but still, you never know what's going to happen as far as if there's going to be a ban in the somewhat near future of going to Havana. So I definitely recommend if you're going to go to Havana, book somewhat in the near future so, so you can go there pretty quickly just in case anything should happen with the travel ban again. In the current world we live in, you never exactly know. So... Uh, Joyce Richardson says she wants to go to St. Lucia. Joyce, a lot of us want to go to St. Lucia. Richard actually says hasn't been yet. Um, yeah, it's, it's, that's definitely an island. And after I talked to Haley with a flair, after that episode, it, it just made me want to go to St. Lucia. Because the pictures that she brought back were absolutely amazing. If you haven't had a chance yet, um, definitely check out her blog, her Instagram. 
um, or check out her her pictures, or go just go to our last show because we got some pictures in there from uh, on the actual show about Saint Lucia. It was a pretty incredible little island in the Caribbean, and not to mention, I didn't know that there were any islands in the Caribbean like in on that in that specific area that had any volcanic activity. So that was actually a lot of fun to learn about when she was on the show. Um, oh, and she had been to Havana too. She told us a lot about Havana, and we had one more guest. Who, if you go on Amazon, he has a book out about touring a, a, a quick, uh, doing a quick tour of uh, Havana, Cuba. I'll have to, we'll have to leave that. Bird, remind me after the show. We're going to put that in the comment, uh, comment the name of that book in the comments. All righty. All right. Uh, next up on our list, the Mayan ruins of Tulum or Chichen Itza. So I had to put both of these on here. Um, the reason I had to put both Tulum and Chichen Itza is because they're both Mayan ruins in about kind of close to the same area of Mexico. Now, it's one's in the, the Mexican state of Quintana Roo and the other one is in uh, Yucatan. So now this one, uh, both of these are accessible from the port of Cozumel. So the Mayan ruins of Tulum and Chichen Itza. Uh, Tulum is the site of a pre-Columbian Mayan walled city serving as a major port for Coba in the Mexican state of Quintana Roo. And Chichen Itza was a large pre-Columbian city built by the Maya people of the Terminal Classic period, and also it's still one of the seven wonders of the world. It's located in Tinum Municipality, Yucatan State in Mexico. If you're interested in some really rich Mayan history, either one of these would be a great excursion for you. Uh, bear in mind, Cozumel is on an island, so you need to take a ferry from, uh, from Cozumel to the mainland and then travel by some kind of motor vehicle, whether it be a bus, taxi, um, to whichever site that you're going to go see. Now, travel time uh, to Tulum from Cozumel is about two and a half hours, and it's about four hours to Chichen Itza. I personally haven't been to Chichen Itza yet, but I have been to Tulum, and I can say it is well worth the trip. The Tulum ruins are... Uh, they're, they're absolutely incredible. Um, it's like you've never seen it's something like you've never seen before. And they're right on the edge of a cliff, kind of like overlooking the sea. And it's just offers some breathtaking cliffside views. I highly recommend that. Um, also, on either site, you can spot usually hundreds of wild iguanas just sunbathing throughout the day. So uh, if, if if you've never seen an iguana, go just go see the iguanas. There's lizards like this long. And it's pretty, pretty awesome to see. Um, Thomas Burke has actually asked a question about uh, Chichen Itza. Can you still climb those pyramids? Uh, I'm assuming that's about Chichen Itza, the pyramids in Chichen Itza. They don't really have pyramids in the Tulum ruins. They have a lot of other um, interesting sites in the ruins in Tulum. So I don't know, uh, but there are, and, and of course you can just kind of roam the grounds and they have like certain areas roped off, but you can go through some of the ruins and check out uh, what the Mayans actually built there. It's it, and it's really cool to see. Um, Thomas Burke, as far as Chichen Itza goes, I don't know if you can climb the pyramids or not. I didn't know if they, uh, I wasn't aware that they ever let you climb the pyramids. So that's actually very new to me. Um, but that's something uh, that I'd be interested to find out if you can actually climb the pyramids. I, I would, oh, Bird says, no, you can't. I guess he was looking it up. Apparently all. you can no longer climb um, the El Castro uh, Chichen Itza. Um, it is possible still to make your way up the uh, tallest pyramid of Yucatan, um, but unfortunately, no. They stopped that in July 21, 2010. July 1st, 2010? That's so recent. I would have figured, well, I mean, so ruins as old as that. I would, uh, I, I would have thought, you know, they, they would have been, uh, you know, closed off a long time before that. Uh, they wouldn't want to, like, you know, for having human activity. Um, Thomas Burke says he heard they were roped off. Yeah, it's uh, unfortunately that's that happens when you have a lot of tourists visiting a place. You know, there's and of course that happens many places in the world. The caves of Lasco, you can't go to the top of the Saint of the, of the uh, Statue of Liberty anymore. It's um, or the Washington Monument. There's a lot of places that it's just you know they, these buildings, these uh, old sites get you know they get older and it's just the more human activity that you have the more dangerous it becomes unfortunately that's the way of it but definitely still go see Chichen Itza if you want to see one of the seven wonders of the world Chichen Itza is definitely one that you something that you need to see and uh it's very accessible through the Caribbean uh <laughs> Joyce Richardson okay she says iguanas be chasing you Joyce that's so true <laughs> She's right, though. No, in Tulum, the iguanas are all over the place. Like, that is, like, that's one of the very, um, th that's one of the things that I remember seeing the most there, just iguanas everywhere. And yeah, they chase you every now and then. If you get too close to them, they'll either run away or they'll chase you. And it's just, it it's a lot of fun. 
Um, I spent the day naming them. I was like, that one's Fred, that one's Jack, that one's Regis Philbin. It was a lot of fun. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, next time you're in Cozumel, be sure to book an excursion through to either Chichen Itza or Tulum. Anyway, moving on. All right, the number one spot on our list. Drum roll, please. Montreal Pitons National Park. Okay, so if you've never heard of this one, like I almost never heard of Mortron for uh, Morin Tropitan National Park. It's a national park and a world heritage site located in Dominica. And it was established as a national park by the Dominican government in July of 1975. And it was the first one to be legally established in the country. It's named after the highest mountain, Morin Tropitans, meaning Mountain of Three Peaks. The park is also a very significant area for volcanic activity. And features within the park include the Valley of Desolation, a region of boiling mud ponds and small geysers, the Boiling Lake, the Two Gorge, and Emerald Pool. <clears throat> now, the very special reason that this park is on the top of our top 10 list is because the lush rainforest reserve in the rugged Dominica Highlands is one of the very few places where cruisers can actually go and experience what the Caribbean was like before the arrival of mankind. It's absolutely almost untouched. The jungle shrouded terrain boasts the richest biodiversity in the Lesser Antilles, as well as five volcanoes, three freshwater lakes, and getting there is also fairly easy and quick by car, as the park is only eight miles east of Rousseau, which is the island's, island nation's capital city and cruise port. So you'd be docking right in Rousseau, take a taxi, go eight minutes, eight minutes away, eight miles away to eight miles east, and then you'll be at the park. Uh, while you're there, be sure to swim in the secluded Emerald Pool, uh, hike the Valley of Desolation to the volcanic Boiling Lake, and gawk at the majestic Trafalgar Falls. It's a little, it's a little bit of a hike when you're in the park, but once you're there, you're going to be glad that you did it. It's because it, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's something exciting to see. There's not much of the Caribbean anymore that is that you can say is untouched. Um, most Caribbean ports have completely been built up, uh, and that's that's one of the ones that hasn't really been built up yet. Honestly, Havana is the same way in the fact that it hasn't, you know, tourism hasn't been that big there for uh, for an extremely long time and, and, and since american cruise ships are starting to come in there now go visit that one too before it's built up but definitely go see this go see the national park um in Rousseau, dominica so if you ever get to travel there um go see that so we got uh we got some comments coming in uh from some of our viewers they've some has there been any word on the port at roatan after it was hit by an msc cruise earlier this week Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I didn't hear anything new about that one either. So uh, yeah, no, nothing too new on that one. But yeah, if you guys uh, guys caught that in the news, yeah, the port was uh, hit by a cruise ship, and as I understand, I think the ship was fine. Um, it was just the port that was that, that was a little bit messed up afterwards. So, but yeah, I haven't heard anything too new on that one, Dave. Sorry about that. Uh, Thomas Burke had a comment in there as well. I climbed the big pyramid near Mex Mexico City back in the '60s. Uh, still excavating po and pottery shards were pick up a go. I saw an old American later pick up a clay doll. So you could actually, so Thomas, are you telling us that you could actually go and pick up like artifacts from, and it was okay? That's like, that would be unheard of now. Like everywhere you go now, people are so, uh, you know, they always tell you, don't touch anything, don't pick anything up, don't take anything home. And it's just, it's, you know, I mean, if you can pick stuff up and take it home, that's, that's awesome. But usually you have to buy some obsidian uh, souvenirs or stone souvenirs in the gift shop. I, I remember when I was in Tulum, I bought an obsidian, I bought a couple obsidian daggers and I bought my mother a leather wallet because leather is super, it's pretty, it's fairly cheap in Mexico compared to in the States. So if you get a chance, um, yeah, and, oh, and tequila is cheap there too. So go buy some good tequila and it's good tequila that's cheap. So yeah, definitely go have a couple shots of tequila while you're there. <laughs> so moving on to uh, our cruise news. So for those of you with more money than Stormy Daniels after a weekend with President Trump, there is a new luxury cruise line now taking bookings. The Ritz-Carlton Yacht Collection has revealed its maiden season itineraries and preliminary details on shore excursion categories. The line's first 298-passenger all-inclusive ship will debut in February 2020. 
The unnamed ship will begin its inaugural season with a four-night Bahamas sailing out of Florida and continue with Caribbean cruises through March. It will then reposition to the Mediterranean, where it will stay through June, followed by Northern Europe for the summer. The ship will spend the fall in Canada and New England for prime foliage season before returning to the Caribbean in November and staying through the holiday season. No itineraries are the same, so passengers can book back-to-back -back cruises without repetition. Most sailings range from 7 to 10 days and include a mix of big-name destinations and smaller yacht ports, such as St. Barth's, Portofino, and Mykonos. Itineraries allow for some overnight port calls as well. The itineraries and intimate shore experiences are not only unique and forward-thinking in their design, but illustrate our commitment to providing rare opportunities to, to today's luxury travelers, said Lisa Holiday. In addition, passengers will have access to concierge ashore, who can create uh, individual and private onshore experiences and tours for passengers. Reservations will open for these sailings in June 2018. Ritz-Carlton and Marriott the ship or yacht as they want to call it uh will feature in luxuries with all, all all balcony cabins multiple dining venues with an intimate feel and water toys fairs will be inclusive uh all inclusive with gratuities and alcoholic drinks and wi-fi among the inclusions uh, i think they had me just then at alcohol included uh sip beverage mm. yum 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 yes get me on that yacht <laughs> Anyway, while keeping on the subject of smaller cruise lines, Bahamas uh, Paradise Cruise Line's newest ship, Grand Classica, sailed into the port of Palm Beach this week for the first time with the sun shining brightly as the ship slowly guided, glided into the pier. Welcome to our Italian beauty, said Kevin Sheehan Jr. at uh, Grand Classica's naming celebration in front of a cloud, uh, crowd of dignitaries, travel agents, and the media. This is a magical moment for us, said the Bahamas president. And in memory of uh, Costa Concordia, the workers in the Bahamas have removed all sharp rocks from the surrounding shorelines. This ship, the former Costa Nia Classica, is the second cruise ship for the cruise line, which had previously maintained a fleet of just one. The line is known for its year-round two-night cruises to Grand Bahama Island in the Bahamas. With the addition of Grand Classica, Bahamas Paradise will now offer one of these two-night cruises every day of the year. It's a great day for the Port of Palm Beach, for Palm Beach County, for Bahamas Paradise Cruise Line to have another ship in our backyard, said O'Neill Casa, uh, who's the chief executive officer of Bahamas Paradise Cruise Line at Grand Classica's naming celebration in front of a crowd of, crowd of dignitaries and media. I think you repeated this on the teleprompter, Bird. <laughs> Anyway, Grand Glass <laughs> is slightly larger than Fleetmate Grand Celebration with a capacity of 1,680 passengers at double occupancy. The ship has 10 decks and 658 staterooms, of which only 10 have balconies. The ship also has eight dining options, three more than Grand Celebration, including a new-to-the-line cook-your-own-meal venue called Rock Grill. Also, new for the line is an adult-only pool area with two hot tubs and a bar. So our cruise show and all the wonderful abilities that we have to bring in guests remotely wouldn't be possible at the level that we do it without vMix. The vMix is the live production software that powers our show and many, many other high-end productions from church services to football games. More and more live productions are running on vMix. And what our producer Bird really liked when he was trying to improve our show was that they give you a full 60-day trial of everything. And that way, you can test it out risk-free before you buy for a full two months. And then they have systems starting at just $350 up to $1,500, depending on your production requirements. If you're going to do any sort of serious live streaming, you need vMix. So try it at vmix.com today. Uh, Thomas Burton got back to me just now about about the uh, clay doll. She, he says uh, the uh, the clay doll, he saw on an Antiques Roadshow for $50,000. That is amazing. And it kind of makes me wish that I was able to go there and collect clay dolls from the ruins before they uh, they, they stop that from happening. Is a uh, $50,000. I mean, I can think of a lot of cruises I could go on with $50,000. Anyway, moving on, our history segment tonight. So Princess Cruises. Uh, it's a cruise line owned by Carnival Corporation and PLC. The company is incorporated in uh, Bermuda, and its headquarters are in Santa Clarita, California. It's previously a subsidiary of P&O Princess Cruises and is part of Holland America Group, which controls the three Carnival brands based on the West Coast of the United States. 
Princess Cruises began in 1965 when founder Stanley McDonald chartered Canadian Pacific's uh, Limited's Alaska cruise ship, Prince, uh, Princess Patricia, for Mexican Riviera cruises from Los Angeles during a time when she would have usually been laid up for the winter. However, Princess Pat, as she was fondly called, had never been designed for tropical cruising, lacking air conditioning, and uh, Princess entered her charter in favor of a more purpose-built cruise ship, Italia. Princess, who marketed the cruise ship as Princess Italia, never officially renamed her, used the ship to inaugurate their Mexican Riviera cruises out of Los Angeles, and did not receive the Princess logo on her funnel until 1967. And in 1969, Princess Italia was used on Alaskan cruises from San Francisco, but in 1973, the charter was canceled and Italia returned to Europe on charter to Costa Cruise Line. Britain's Peninsular and Oriental uh, Steam Navigation Company, which is also known as P&O, uh, which by 1960 was the world's largest shipping company with 320 ocean-going vessels, acquired Princess Cruise Lines in 1974 and their Spirit of London, uh, originally having been Norwegian Cruise Lines steward, was transferred to the Princess Fleet, becoming the first Sun Princess. On October 23, 2000, the Peninsular and Oriental System Navigation Company spun off its passenger division to form an independent company, P&O, Princess Cruises. The company subsequently merged with Carnival Corporation on uh, April 17, 2003, to form the world's largest cruise operating company in a deal with the U.S. $5.4 billion. As a result of the merger, Carnival Corporation and P&O Princess were integrated to form Carnival Corporation and PLC with a portfolio of 11 cruise ship brands. Today, the line has 17 ships, which cruise worldwide and are marketed to both American and international passengers. Uh, Richard, actually, I just got your comment coming in about drink one big one. It's just, I'm sipping just a little bit out of time. Cheers. Mm. I get to do that because Bird had earlier put a joke in the script about me and the end alcohol. So I get to do that now. <laughs> anyway, remember, guys, we have many past videos available for you to watch at our website, which is uh, cruiseweek.tv, which also has links to our t-shirt pages and support pages as well. If you'd like to help with funding our season two trip, or if you'd like to advertise on the show, you can do that with the links from our site. Guys, also, if you know someone who'd like to enjoy watching the show as much as you do, be nice and share this link to their Facebook wall. That way they too can enjoy. Remember, if you share this link out, it doesn't mean less show for you. It just means more show for other people. Also, be sure... <laughs> what was... <laughs> Oh, the, yes. Oh, you wanted, you wanted me to talk about these. Okay, the side bands. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. Um, before we go today, uh, there was a reason I, we had asked earlier in the, uh, the, the pre-show about uh, if you guys got seasick on the ships. Because we have a little special uh, gift for you. And I wonder, Bird I, hasn't told me exactly how we're giving these away. But we're going to have these uh, as, as, a, as a giveaway at some point. Um, probably in the near future. So if you have any kind of seasickness problem when you go on cruise ship, we have these lovely side bands. They come in black and white. And it looks like, oh, they're green packaging. So it looks like <laughs> they're kind of uh, they're, they're disappearing there because of the green packaging. But yes, we have these side bands that are supposed to help with uh, seasickness. I've, I'm not quite familiar with the technology myself, but it's if you guys have trouble with seasickness, we're going to uh, figure out how to give these away. Bird, do you know any? Do you know how we're going to do that yet, or is that something we want to release? Or? We're going to announce it on the next week's show. Okay, but, so we're going to um, announce it sure on next... Make sure you're watching. Yeah, so make sure you're watching, because we're going to announce, I guess, on next week's show, uh, who's going to be the lucky winner of these sidebands. So if you're watching, if you have seasickness, tune in next week for sure. <laughs> that way you might have a really good chance at uh, not getting seasick in one of, uh, one of your future cruises. Um... Also, yes, be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and Facebook pages because just doing that alone really helps show our sponsors the support that we have and it helps keep the show alive each week. Uh, plus, you guys get entered into some great cruise swag drawings, things like these sidebands, for example. So, uh, yeah, just but just by watching the show, just keep in mind uh, you could be winning one of those next week. Also, guys, next week uh, I'm gonna be I'm actually gonna be gone for a little while. I'm going on vacation for once. Oh, do we have good music to play for that? No, no, we didn't. We no, no music. Really? You played Agadu to annoy me and you don't have any good music to play for? Okay, I'm going on vacation for once. So Matt is going to be back uh, next week. Also, join Matt and Bird this Wednesday for uh, the cruise ship uh, social live chat. 
at 8 p.m. when we get to all know you guys a little bit better in a more casual setting, a.k.a. Matt's bedroom. <laughs> also, Matt is going to be back next week with more cruise news and information from the other ships and the ocean. And uh, I'll be back in a couple weeks after that. And Sharice uh, says, have an awesome vacation. Thank you so much. I will have an amazing vacation. And I'll see you guys in a few weeks. Have a good night, cruisers. We'll see you on the ships.